I guess. All right, let's get back to this thread because I feel like we've yeah, got yeah, totally yeah. sidetracked. <laughs> I might have to edit this down. We're going to run out of time. All right, so <clears throat> we're on like slide two. All right, so this is... Uh, I, I, if you want, I can guide it a little bit. I can. Yeah, I yeah, can, go uh, ahead. You, you over tell me when to move here. <clears throat> you, can, you can go fast. But you got to share the uh, slides because I'm not... Oh, yeah, that. yeah, my bad. I have it up here. I've got to just... Uh, let's do that. Let me make sure. Yeah. So size you think or a little bigger, a little bigger. Sure. Is that better? Yeah. Or is that too big? Okay. That's good. So yeah, I, I, I put the data in, in several different ways. So I divided it by, you know, volume divided by monthly active users, showed it in absolute terms versus relative terms, et cetera. So that's what the first few charts do. And you can just, you know, um, you can on 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 the viewer's own time they can go through these and kind of get a really good idea. But yeah, you you can scroll down to the next one. And yeah, the next one. So it's relative active users. Nothing yeah, to note so here except this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, Bitcoin. The That's percentage crazy. of all of our users that are Bitcoiners or using Bitcoin has gone down significantly over the years. Wow, look at it's that. It's almost like currently it's almost as much as Litecoin. And and that's that's in percent. So it's still the mm -hmm. same roughly the same absolute number of people, uh but the proportion of our total sales coming has gone down. So if that's if it was 100,000 users 5 years ago, it's still around that right now today, but it's uh in proportional terms our company has grown a lot. And, uh, you know, it's so the, the impact or influence of Bitcoin has gone down on our bottom line. Yeah. Is, is a lot of Ethereum coming from DeFi? People settle in a trade? Yeah. Day from so, yeah, if we scroll down, I'll show you. I, I kind of uh, comment on, on a lot of those things. So this chart here just breaks down the average payment size. So you can see the Ethereum stable coins have the highest average purchase amount on our platform. Um, Interesting. And then Litecoin is actually near the bottom. You'll see 54 bucks for the average Litecoin transaction. Lightning is the smallest. So it kind of suggests like the types of users using Litecoin. I see it on the platform. It's more, Litecoin is more popular in kind of emerging markets with respect to other coins. Um, and uh, yeah, so here, this, this chart here shows that uh, since the last, tweet thread that I posted, which was over a year ago, the Litecoin ecosystem in terms of monthly active users has gained, uh, gained share. Well, so you lump, you lump us all together. Uh, you keep doing this. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's because uh, I'm in the end with all Bitcoin brain and everything else is uh, not Bitcoin. <laughs> you might as well in the next slide, time. you do separate it. I do. Yeah. Because Litecoin really has separated itself from those other coins. I kind of wish I, yeah. So on this slide, you can see that Litecoin is up for <clears throat> over 4%. And then Dogecoin and Dash are just kind of like very stagnant um, in terms of payment share. Um, so Litecoin has like taken, it has separated itself from, from those coins. Um, so yeah, yeah if you keep lightning's going down, grown. Lightning's grown a lot. So I'm, I'm has, curious there's there's reasons for that which i'll get into later in, in the thread okay so you want me to read through this or you just go go yeah, to charts so, um basically the thing with the thing with ethereum and why it's so uh uh or, okay yeah so let's start with bitcoin um uh basically it's what's caused its stagnation have have been you know fee spikes uh over the years um, and if you look at the chart next, you can see that, you know, we lose every time the fee spike, we kind of lose share. Um, and, uh, and then also we used to do zero comp payments with Bitcoin. And then we had to stop that in the fall of last year because, uh, of, of, uh, too many miners were, uh, um, forcing, uh, RBF. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And you can go down. Oh, right here. Uh, yeah. Yep. Which, you know, Matt, Actually, I've been, well, since we're on that topic, I don't want to get too sidetracked, but I've been yeah. trying to push Matt and BitRefill to get zero confirmation on Litecoin. They sound 
from my, if I don't want to reveal anything, but it sounds like you guys are open to it. It just, we are needs, open. Need some work to do it. Would, is there, would it be helpful if anybody from the Litecoin community kind of volunteered to do the work? Honestly, no. Um, we, okay. we, we <laughs> so, I mean, we, we have the team that we have and it's not likely that we're going to let an outsider come in to, and also it's hard for an outsider to come in and look at our code base and, and it's, you know, it's a big code base. So yep. um, that's not likely. I, I think I'm, I'm definitely in favor of adding it. I've been the biggest cheerleader of this idea, um, but it's, it's a matter of priorities and uh, we are working on a hundred different things at all times. And it's a matter of right. like, how much impact does this bring? Um, I think it, it, it would be a great ad. I did the math on like, you know, on any given day, something like 40, you know, uh, 40, 50, 60 user hours are wasted just waiting for Litecoin confirms to come through, you know, at a two and a half mm -hmm. block average, a two and a half minute block average. Um, but I, I do think it will get done. And if I had, if you made me bet on it, I would say it will be done inside of a year. Uh, if it's maybe less than six months, I'd still say there's a pretty good shot at that, but that's just my guess. Uh, okay. and I'm not the decision maker on it at all. So yeah. Well, there's anything we can do, even if like there was a, maybe a fundraiser or something, I think we could maybe find, cause to me it's a, it's, it is a huge upgrade because blocks are generally, yeah, they're two and a half minutes, no big deal, but sometimes they're five minutes, sometimes they're seven minutes. And yeah. if it's something that's no skin off your back. That's sure going to make make me much more likely to use bit refill than another service. If you guys are the only ones or the first to go yeah. instant and it's all about forming habits as we're going to see here. All right. So lightning, yeah. <laughs> lightning active users. Yeah. So our lightning monthly active users, it is way up over the last year, but uh, most of that growth has come from a single integration that we did with an app called Bello in Argentina. Um, so there's a whole thread on, on why that happened, but basically it's not like, um, it's not a bunch of sovereign lightning users making payments to us in that integration. It's Bello has a lightning integration with BitRefill where they're sending, uh, B2B kind of lightning payments to us. Um, uh, and it's great and it works awesome. And, uh, they can pay like if a user buys like a dollar, gift card from us, they send us a dollar worth of lightning. And that's actually really cool and innovative in its own way mm -hmm. um, is it's instantly settled. Unlike, you know, when you send it, you can't send $1 at a time in most cases uh, on, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's costly. It takes time, et cetera. Um, but so is yeah, so is Bello kind of like as pay as I go, like I'm at a store or something, I just buy it because cake wallet had something like this a long time ago where, um, at a restaurant, the bill's twenty seven fifty two. I just type it in and buy it, and it maybe. Access. How's that so work? Bello is mostly like it's just a crypto app in Argentina where you can convert your local currency pesos into usually crypto dollars, uh, and that's getting crypto dollars in Argentina is like a very important thing with their high high level of inflation, etc. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, that's the base. The core app is just convert your pesos to dollars. And then one of the side things that they can do is, hey, use your crypto dollars that you have and you can now buy cool products uh, from BitRefill. Um, and so they're mostly buying like Steam Steam uh, gift cards because mm. and it's because of the um, the dollar, the, the official exchange rate in Argentina is not good. So they actually save a lot of money buying Steam gift cards through us than if they were to use pesos and their local uh, debit card. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, that's, so yeah, it's a custodial service. And yes. It looks widely popular. Um, yes. Yep. It's a it's a very popular app in Argentina. Um, so th the big thing with Lightning here is is that the yellow the yellow share. Uh, represents kind of the non B2B integration share. And even among that yellow slice, uh, it's my prediction that over half of them are just coming from custodial wallets like Wallet of Satoshi, et cetera. So um, is there some sovereign lightning user growth at BitRefill? 
I think probably, but it's still, it's not growing at the rate that I originally wanted it to be. Um, and so that's kind of the main observation here. And we can kind of move on from here. So it's a cool, I mean, lightning is cool. I mean, it's like once you, once you get into the custodial world, if you're going to be in the custodial world, lightning has a lot of use to it, right? It's very, yeah, if you're into very hub and cool. topologies, it's <laughs> once you sacrifice that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The ETH ecosystem, 28. Yeah. It, it's, it's kind of what you were hinting at is there's so much money with the ICOs, the NFTs, all the DeFi stuff. There were so many Ponzi schemes going on, so many different projects <laughs> that, that, they there's so much money that's floating in the eth ecosystem and over the years uh yeah that has led to a lot of them kind of trying to uh you know uh, cash out their profits etc so that's one of the reasons why ethereum is so big with us the the other big thing about ethereum is ethereum has stable coins and that is like a huge innovation and um uh you know more more value is sent over, over stable coins than bitcoin even now um mm -hmm. uh so yeah and this chart shows that um you know over the last year most of the stable coin growth has been on polygon which is a side chain slash l2 so it what that's kind of suggesting is that the on-chain stable coin usage it's kind of being held back a little bit by the fact that like the fees are getting higher and higher on on uh, Ethereum. Um, it comes and goes, but yeah, people don't want to pay like $6 to send a hundred. Right. Um, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. now we get to and, the legacy. Yeah. The, the light, the light, yeah. The Litecoin guys always get mad when I call it legacy, legacy coins, but it's kind of, that's, that's kind of the point that, um, you know, we, we've talked about already is like, it's been around for so long. It's, um, it's to its advantage now that it's been around so long and because it's gathered those network effects over the years, it's very similar to Bitcoin. So it's listed on, it's super easy for any exchange or wallet to integrate because it's basically the same thing as Bitcoin. And that is working towards its advantage uh, a lot. And so it's never been more used than now. And I think that's a true interesting fact because it doesn't have the hype that, you know, it's not a hyped coin. It's not a, it's not, doesn't have like a bunch of marketing dollars. Behind it. Yeah. And yet it's still growing. And I think that's, there's, there's some really interesting signal behind that. Yeah. Well, I noticed up top, you know, you said the <clears throat> average dollar amount spent using Litecoin is much lower. It's towards the bottom. Do you feel like there's a particular use case that's driving that? Like, is it, I don't know. Yeah, low dollar gift cards is there like a gambling site that you guys that people put ten dollars in well, or yeah in, i've tried like to like kind of narrow <clears> it down <throat> because oftentimes when we do see kind of anomalies in the data like this it's usually is attributable to like oh i understand yeah it's like it's this gambling website and that's what's driving it all uh which makes it less organic or less real of an effect right less i can't broad, find yeah. that i i can't find that i think it they, the users come from many different countries. They, it seems like they buy many different products. It seems organic to me. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, uh, you know, we all have limited time to look into these things. I still, there's still an outside chance that it's kind of this one single phenomenon that I haven't realized yet. Um, but I think on the whole, the big use case for Litecoin is it's not like, Litecoin hodlers necessarily, it's people who have a bunch of crypto on and they store it on whatever exchange. Most users in the world still store their money on crypto exchanges, mm -hmm. I would say over half. And they want to buy something on BitRefill. So what they do is they, they'll sell XYZ shit coins that they have on, on that exchange and then they'll change it to Litecoin quickly and then they'll send that Litecoin over, uh, over to us. And then that's how they complete their business. So in a way that it's, it's very nice that Litecoin's being used that way. But at the same time, I think it's not like um, they're not hanging on to that Litecoin, which maybe that's why, maybe that's one of the main reasons why the price hasn't appreciated like you mm -hmm. might expect, you know, so. 
Yeah, it's got it's got higher. I mean, if you look at even like you mentioned coin market cap a while ago, um, if you look at the liquidity, like the amount of volume on a daily basis Litecoin does versus its market cap is always much, much higher than a lot of coins you would think would be, you think Bitcoin would be bigger or Ethereum would be bigger, but actually as a portion of its market cap, Litecoin is right. usually towards the top, closer to the stable coins, which are like a hundred percent almost. But um, yeah, so it's just really interesting uh, that it's taken that role. Um, that was the original idea, right? To be this spendable crypto. And I guess the question becomes, is that, is that valuable long-term? And as a light, in, in my opinion, as a, as a light coiner, there's a lot of coins that people could choose to use. Um, it could be BCH or Doge or Dash or uh, Nano or Monero or whatever, but they are gravitating towards Litecoin. And that's fantastic because um, there are things that are network effects. I think habits are formed. Um, what well, you're seeing this spike here, I don't know if you, if you can see my cursor or not, but um, yep. you know, in 2023, when this is when ordinals came in, right? Yeah. And so they came on board and they didn't go back and they, mm -hmm. they continue to grow. And what they're not doing is going, Oh, I'm going to go back and try Bitcoin again. Like they gave up, they just moved on. <laughs> and so at uh, least for medium of exchange type things, I think yep. you're absolutely true. You're, you're, you're right. There's a big chunk. Yeah. And so it's, it's I, I guess, yeah. So you can see also um, that most of these transactions are coming from exchanges. Is that what you were alluding to? That's that's my feeling. Uh, that's okay. based on a lot of anecdotal evidence. It's not, as I said, I still leave the door open for maybe I'm wrong about all of this and there's some things going on that I'm not understanding. But based on anecdotal evidence, like it's people have stuff on exchanges. They switch to Litecoin quickly to spend with us because it's easy. It's there's very low slippage, uh, you know, that type of thing. So, OK, because okay. I mean, uh, you, you were saying that it comes from a bunch of different countries. And I was wondering if you like how you knew that. Was that just based on their IPs uh, yeah, hitting your, your endpoints? Yeah. yeah. OK. Yeah. And you can see, and, you know, there's a lot there's yeah. VPNs that, that happen. So that's why it becomes harder to like figure out exactly. But in general, yeah, you're putting all this stuff together. Yeah. OK. You want to gloss over? I mean, we talk about Tron a bit. I mean, yeah, it's I mean interesting. Yeah. They, I would have another are. question actually before we oh, go on, sure. just yeah, go ahead. since we're still on it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I was because uh, you guys, you're on my Doge app, right? Or my Doge wallet, sorry. Um, and it's it's pretty cool. Like if you have Doge in there, you get tipped or whatever. You can buy yourself like a gift card for whatever uh, using Bit Refuel. And I was just curious if uh, what kind of um, KYC obligations you guys have and so I don't know exactly but we have limits like uh up to up to you can spend a certain amount each day and all you have to give us is your email but if you start spending more than that amount then we do throw the KYC on you in most cases for the average user it's not going to be an issue um but yeah, we do have KYC levels and tiers and we have a legal team and we cooperate with, you know, law enforcement when, when they request that type of thing. Um, so, yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. It makes sense. Yeah. No, no surprises there, right? Yeah. It's, just... it's, it's the same as when you go to like a Walgreens or a CVS mm -hmm. and you buy a gift card. You don't have to like show your ID and all that stuff because it's a petty amount, right? So, yeah. What, but if you're what, buying a five thousand dollar gift card, suddenly, you're gonna then like, oh. yeah, I think that type of thing would trigger yeah. KYC on our platform. Yeah. Do you where's where's BitRefill based? Where's their the company located? Yeah, HQ is in Stockholm. Uh, but we have like, gosh, 90 or so people now and in like over 30 countries, uh, we're mostly hmm. remote now. So, okay. Yeah. Hey, I mean, if you guys are ever looking for a show to sponsor, you know, I'm not, I'm, I would not, we wouldn't turn it down anyway. Uh, <laughs> here's on Tron. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I, this, this chart shows Tron is the USDT on Tron is the largest crypto payment network above Bitcoin and Ethereum. Even there's billions of dollars uh, 
every day that move move over Tron. And if you scroll down, this is where it kind of gets interesting with Tron. And that is Tron kind of made its Tron is very fascinating. It was in the right place at the right time. Uh, and it in it it was this cheap network that uh, threw tether on it. They were smart enough to do that. And then they started getting some network effects mostly in Asia at first. Um, mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, China in particular is like, you know, the largest exporter in the world. So people started using Tether to do, you know, business payments, cross-border business payments, et cetera. And so it basically exploded, uh, you know, and, but the things that made the characteristics that made Tron succeed and get to where it is cheap, fast, cheap payments. Mm -hmm. Those are going away now because it's kind of gotten too big for itself. And, um, it's, it's, uh, so the fees on Tron in particular, at the beginning of 23, it was like 20, 30 cents per transaction. Now it's like, uh, on the chart there, it shows a dollar 50, yeah. but it's even higher now than that, uh, to present day. And so we're getting to a point where it's not, it does, it's not the same way that it used to be. And so it's starting to price out a lot of end retail users in various countries. And it's maybe it will form into some more like B2B dollar sending network. And then where does that leave all these other coins? Like, is there, uh, are, are there going to be other stable coin networks that kind of step in to fill the void? I don't know, but it's very fascinating. Well, it's interesting because this is, to me, this might be more relevant to Litecoin's growth than the Bitcoin side. That, it could uh, be, yeah. Because like, I mean, Litecoin fees are like, right now, I think they're like a tenth of a penny. Right. So I, they're, I, it's really I, low. I'm wondering what the absolute numbers are of Tron. Because there's been a lot of talk about stable coins on Litecoin. Um, we've been, as again, I'm surprised it hasn't happened. Um, I just don't know how quickly that would fill blocks up if you had a USDT on Litecoin. Would it would it put us in that position all of a sudden? Oh, now we're going to see fees spike up. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the usage number. Like if there was a million transactions a day, is that about what Tron's doing? Uh, I think like Tron does million. I don't know how many Tron does every single day, but it's a lot. Um, I think Litecoin, that's, it's a tough question. There are already other stablecoin networks that are making gains. So Polygon, for example, Arbitrum, um, you know, Base, et cetera. So there, and network effects are everything. Um, so if you're, if you're not very early to this, uh, putting stablecoins on your network, um, even if it's, could handle it on a technical level, uh, um, uh, a large amount of volume. You are suffer You're fighting an uphill battle against other networks that have already mm -hmm. got the lead on you in terms of, uh, you know, it, it's all Metcalf's law, the network effects, right? Yeah, um, no doubt. You know, if I have if I have dollars on Litecoin, but the person that I want to send those dollars doesn't accept dollars on Litecoin, then it's useless to me, right? So. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah, just, here, I'll give you, I just looked it up. What, what, if you were to guess, I'll give you both a guess, how many daily transactions are on Tron? I would say over a million. Animal, you got to guess? Don't look it up. Don't cheat. Two million? Yeah. It says here, as of September 5th, 2024, the Tron network processed 13.78 million transactions in a day. Yeah. Oh. I wasn't terribly Pretty far wild. off. I mean, one order, one order of magnitude, but <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty wild, man. Yeah, it is. And it, it's, uh, it is, it's a fascinating thing that's happened. And I think the fact that it's getting expensive, we're going to see some fascinating side <clears> effects <throat> of that. Yeah. That is wild, man. I don't know. Just, uh, it's interesting. It's one of those things that's silently happening and it's like, you can't ignore it. You have to be aware this is what people want. And it might just be that short term transition before we get into crypto. They got to get in the dollar first. Right. And then watch Maybe. the dollar get inflated and then they'll go, oh, OK, this is why I want crypto. I don't know. There's there's a lot of possibilities. 
Because these governments have got to start saying, hang on, I don't want you using the dollar. Like it's got to start you mean really. These, these non-dollar governments, these non-US yeah. governments. Yes. I mean, they already are. Uh, they already, they for decades have discouraged dollar usage in their countries because they know that the dollar, um, you know, reduces the value of their own local currency. The problem mm. is, and the revolution that's happened is crypto, crypto dollars. They can no, these governments can no longer keep their citizens from obtaining dollars. They used to be able to do that quite effectively because they had the centralized banking systems and they could place rules upon those banks that said that prevented citizens from acquiring dollars or acquiring them at a good price. But mm -hmm. now you can go to any peer to peer market on the internet and you can trade away your uh, local currency for crypto dollars and it completely gets around the banking system, the local banking system. And so that's that's the huge, one of the most untold stories, I think, of the last five years of the world, mm -hmm. not just of crypto, is the fact that the entire world is now dollarizing more than yep. it ever has before. And that's saved the dollar. It's saved the U.S.'s ass to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I, can, that's, I, I completely, we talked about like, why have they not been more harsh? I think they have seen Tether as a tremendous way to grow dollar adoption around the world. And yep. it's currency supremacy. I mean, the dollar is going to become, I don't even understand how banks aren't failing all over these. Maybe they are. And I just, you know, we don't hear about it, but you would think yeah, you start losing 20% of your user base aren't putting deposits they are. in the bank anymore. And when yeah. you look at emerging market currencies over the last five years, they've been absolutely destroyed against the dollar. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think 10 more years from now, there will be like 100 less currencies, 100 less fiat currencies in the world. They just cannot compete. Yeah. And it's good. I mean, in, in, a, in a way, it's, it's good when you are able it's bad for those governments and those people holding that local currency. But if you're working and you're able to produce something of value to somebody, you know, on the other side of the world uh, to be able to get real value out of your work, instead of this like system of having to jump through all these hoops to get anything out of what your work is, it is ultimately good. And we should see a, a more of a leveling of wealth over time instead of the con consolidation. Generally that's true. I still think, you know, it's um, it still sucks that they are dollarizing and that makes the U.S. government more likely to abuse that power. Right. Um, yeah. But it's a step in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, assuming yeah, assuming we can ever responsibly manage the dollar. <laughs> it's, it's a freer market. So that's yeah. always good. Yep. Yep. They're choosing this voluntarily, right? They can change mm -hmm. anytime they want. Okay, so uh, this is just stablecoin. I mean, it looks like this is the only one maybe struggling. Probably yeah, but, of fees, right? It's more about this eating their lunch at this point in time. Well, if you look at the chart kind of closely, it and I guess I haven't really... The observation from this chart is that it's actually kind of flattened over the last year. Stablecoin payments in terms of overall share, it's gone up mm -hmm. a little bit, but it's only increased like a couple of percent. Whereas in previous years, it was increasing a lot. Um, and so my point here was that the fact that Tron got expensive and the fact that all these other networks are kind of competing for these stablecoin volumes now, it's fractured everything. And it's fractured the liquidity and the attention spans of all these different people. And so it's kind of we're in a transitional period now where we're trying to find the next stablecoin network that's cheap and quick and safe. Um, and so that's kind of caused the plateauing of stablecoin usage. I mean, it looks to me you're getting more growth. I'm telling you, you get more growth out of Litecoin. You could yeah, almost, I, at this point in time, you could almost offer free transactions on Litecoin. <laughs> Just telling it, you, as a marketing it, thing. You probably could maybe, but um, that's hard to, that's hard I know. to, uh, you can't promise that I get engineer it. that. Yeah. Just eat, just eat the fee, but, oh yeah, I guess you had the users spending the coins. So, but uh, yeah, that's the, the zero comp thing. All right. So th this is probably the, maybe the one I really am interested in just because I think 
um, the region, I guess is regionality a word, the, yeah. <laughs> the preference across various parts of the world for some coins over others, I think is really interesting just on, again, habit developing type of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so let's try, I don't know if, I guess we can kind of see this. You probably have the actual data, but um, I guess there's a portion of, this is monthly active users, MAU. Yep. I think you can click on the picture too. No. Size. No? no oh, yeah, for, for me, yeah, yeah. Um, let's just start. I mean, I guess let's just go region. You got seven regions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, North America, pretty uh, clean chart, actually. I guess you got five. Pretty evenly distributed. Um, yeah, so it used yeah. to be used to be Bitcoin dominated. And the big change in the last year is that the Ethereum ecosystem pie is now bigger than Bitcoin. So that's the first time that's ever happened. Uh, in Europe, um, it is way bigger than Bitcoin now. Uh, yeah, so the Ethereum ecosystem. Yep. Uh, when you go over to Asia, you'll see that Binance Pay is hugely popular. And also... Uh, look at how look how low Bitcoin is there. Yep. Almost equal with Litecoin, Doge, yeah. and Dash. Um, Same thing Middle with the Middle East. East. Dominated by Binance. Um, Africa. Africa, Binance. dominated by Binance. And even South America is dominated by Binance, except that uh, our Bello integration in Argentina pushes those numbers up for Bitcoin. And also mm -hmm. all of the lightning activity in El Salvador pushes things up for Bitcoin as well. So that's gotcha. why. But if you were to take those things out of the equation, South America would look very similar to like Africa um, in terms of like Binance Pay would be dominating. Yeah. And yeah, and to be clear, I mean, from those charts, these pie slices, I know you got Litecoin, Doge, and Dash. That's probably like 80%, 80, 90% Litecoin. Yeah. Yep. That's wild. And then down here is all that's ETH. Yep. Yeah. Australia, for whatever reason, we've always had more. I, I think Ethereum is just bigger in Australia. Um, I feel like, I feel like Australia has a lot of Monero folks. Not just because we have a couple that have come into our place that for whatever reason. I mean, they've got a weird government. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it is. <laughs> so maybe it's they really... go into DeFi to get their money back. But even yeah. there, I mean, I, I'm impressed at this. I mean, I know it's just, it's about half of Bitcoin, but to again, I keep coming back to the fact we're even with Bitcoin here, pretty close mm -hmm. here. I mean, in all these places, and obviously this is a, an, an anomaly, but... Um, it's really surprising, like you said, just with the lack of uh, the lack of marketing, that it all just seems to be this organic across the world. Mm -hmm. um, Litecoin's held its own and, and that it's become that one people have gravitated, gravitated towards when they do have a plethora of options. I mean, we, we look at Bit, BitPay all the time, and I, I've mentioned them probably too much on a Bit Refill one, but, um, you know, they have the option of, Bitcoin Cash and Polygon and Shiba Inu and all, you know, maybe 20, 30 mm -hmm. different coins. And I think even now they have an integration where they can use anything. Um, and it doesn't seem to have an impact. People have developed a habit. It works every time. It's super inexpensive. And so they don't have any reason to leave. 100% upstream. uptime, right? right? Like no service interruptions, reliability. Also, but it's these outside wallets and exchanges. They all have Litecoin integrated. Like Shiba Inu, for example, I mean, yeah, it's a it's a pretty big one and most of the popular exchanges have it and such, but all these tiny little wallets and exchanges that exist around the world, like they don't adopt the latest and greatest thing every time, but they all have Litecoin. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And it's it's those numbers that that uh, you know, it's just been around so long and it's so easy to integrate. That's the big deal. It's got the yeah. trust factor too. I feel like, um, despite what some people might say about Charlie Lee, like he's he's a man of integrity, and I feel like that's reflected in the project, um, and has a huge part to do with why people use it. In my opinion. it could. I I think I think it's I think a huge chunk of the users don't even know who that person is. Um, 
they just mm -hmm. they, they they know this litecoin thing it's been around a long time and they tried it once it worked and they're going to keep using it he says that yeah. all the time he's always like most people don't even know who i am so don't focus on me <laughs> right yeah but i mean uh, so, but like heads of exchanges people that are making apps are more technical right and they that matters to them so yeah that's true they won't they won't endorse it right if it's a pump and dump yeah that's true well sometimes they do endorse it because it's a pump and dump but I if they get paid enough that. yeah they do you get mean paid like enough. ape coin you mean when bit refill added ape coin because yeah. <laughs> but then these people's integrities are <laughs> in right. jeopardy and yeah like i mean oh, is that the end yeah oh, i guess these are yeah, that is the end good. okay so this is cut kind of, that i'll i don't know this is interesting low on low on erc 20 top-ups that is interesting our top-ups generally looking for lower fees is that what you think i think so i think um gosh it's a good question it you you noticed the noticeable thing right away which is that ethereum and ethereum stable coins they kind of have a lower share it's hard to explain but maybe it's just um i don't know people like using their MetaMask or whatever, and they're okay with the fees as long as, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe the, it's a culture of Bitcoin where maybe we're more fee sensitive. Bitcoiners are, and so like we we would rather deposit into top up. Also, traditionally, Bit Refill is a very kind of Bitcoin cultured and Bitcoin ethos company. So mm -hmm. maybe our Bitcoin users are much more. Uh, experts on bit refill usage and they they understand that this top up method exists that's one of the problems we've had is like a lot of users don't even know that this top up feature exists Wait, so explain it to me because i don't think i i don't know that i've looked into it so so basically you can make a uh, you can top up your account credits with a one time transaction so you can send a thousand dollars of bitcoin to us and then you have a thousand dollars of credit and you can draw down upon that credit over multiple transactions. So you buy $20 Instacart, you buy a $20 Uber ride, whatever. It's pulling from that credit instead of you having to do an on-chain transaction each oh, time. Oh, gotcha. Okay. You sell it at that moment of top up. Like it's yeah. if I send a thousand dollars in Litecoin, it's a thousand dollars. Even if the price goes down next week, I sell access at that, like because you've sold it at that. I think it's the price. user's choice. They can denominate it in Bitcoin, Ethereum. I don't know if they can. I don't think they can denominate it in Litecoin or stuff like any anything else aside from Bitcoin, Ethereum, or dollars. Uh, but the user generally has the choice. If they're depositing a thousand dollars in Bitcoin, they can denominate that balance in Bitcoin or dollars. So. Is there any advantage to doing that? It's saving on like, fees. Well, uh, for someone like a Litecoin where there's not many fees, is it maybe just they're saying like, yeah, I got paid in Litecoin. I just want to move it to dollars. And so yeah, I'll just that could send be a it thing. all off today, right? Yeah. that It's also convenience. Like when you go to BitRefill, it, you can literally buy like a $20 Uber card in five seconds from your account credit versus having okay. to whip out your wallet and you know scan the code and all that stuff. So, okay. It makes sense. But I do think your point about like higher fees definitely are more of a motivation to use this feature. So I think Litecoin mm -hmm. users would have less of an incentive because they don't have to deal with high fees. Especially if you got zero confirmation transactions, then we would, wouldn't yeah. use it at all. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it is convenient too, because there is a bit of a pain. I know like BitRefill has an implementation, I think in the light wallet, uh, there was some sort of I don't think it was anything you guys did. It was just like, hey, we integrated Bit Refill. You click on it and it takes you to the site, but it doesn't link your wallet in any way. So it is a little bit of a pain to go. I got to go copy the address, drop back, copy the amount, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's it's a little bit of time consuming. Um, it's, it's still a barrier. That I don't get why, how we haven't gotten past this in crypto. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I just feel like it's uh, when it's on the same screen. If I'm on my phone, the fact I have to jump back and forth between apps just feels like, why can't I? I? I'm you. sure there's a link to link up the wallets. There's got to be some something that can be done, right? I think there <laughs> are ideas out there. It's a matter of getting all of the exchanges and wallets to, to do that all at once, you know? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot. There's still a lot of like siloing, like you said, you know, to the collaboration part. Um, 
the, the thing that's been so disappointing to me in crypto in general is like when people are protectionist about their information, like, you know, I don't know if you know what Bell's coin is. Bell's coin has this new coin on, uh, that's script mining. It's, it's a long story. You can go watch our last episode, but, uh, essentially they're like, Hey man, we're going to try everything. We, we, if we do drive chains and it works and you can move it over to Litecoin, great. So there's a developer working on something that is being a little bit agnostic about what chain ends up on. It's more about building something cool that people can use. And I, and I hope that we get away from this, you know, at the worst is like the be Bitcoin only or be this coin only and getting mad. I was like, who cares, man, if people want to use it, it's a free market, let them use what's useful to them. Uh, Cause that's the name of the game in the long run is as long as people are doing it voluntarily, like you said, this libertarian ideal, mm -hmm. then it's a good thing. Like anytime someone's doing what they, they want, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Period. <laughs> well, unless not, not harming anybody. There's else, also selfishness <laughs> though. Like if, uh, from an economic standpoint, if I'm a Bitcoiner, uh, you know, it's good for the other person to use options that work for them, but it's not good for me as a Bitcoiner because that that means that they're not denominating a Bitcoin, they're not using, you know, so it kind of lessens my bags. And that's just, that is a true fact of, of any coin. And, yeah. and I think it's a, it's an economic, it, it's a reasonable tribalism in the sense that like, when you're trying to push all usage onto your the coin that you have your bags in, that's like a natural phenomenon, right? It's not yep. just a bunch of jerks. Like it's like an it's like a rational selfish selfishness. This is this is a uh, conflict that a lot of Litecoiners have right now with Bell's coin, right? Because despite the fact that it's making the whole like script miners more efficient. And that they're able to uh, process. Let me, let me more give him a quick background. Let me give him a quick background. Bell's coin was this coin that Billy Marcus, the creator of Dogecoin, created before Dogecoin, mm -hmm. and it went dead. It just nobody was using it, and some people found out about it. They essentially relaunched the chain last year, okay. and and now it's now merge mined with Litecoin and Dogecoin. So its hash power is equal to Litecoin's within nine months of launching it. But just like with Dogecoin. If it appreciates in price, it pays the Litecoin miners. It's so I just want to give you a little background so you're not like totally. Sure, yeah, yeah. It increases generally the security budget for, for Dogecoin and Litecoin. Same way, like I mean, Dogecoin flipped Litecoin in 2021, right? Uh, in a move that like many Litecoiners still don't understand. But like me, how is that possible? But anyway, <laughs> uh, it flipped it. And so now even though Litecoin's, you know, all time low or hitting all time lows against uh, the Bitcoin pair hitting all time lows within the Bitcoin pair, uh, the hash rate is still hitting all time highs, right? So having a coin that adds to the, to the security network or to security budget is just, it's a net win, uh, for Litecoin and for Dogecoin. Um, but there's a lot of, I say Litecoiners that don't have that reaction that <laughs> they're just like, you know, you guys are diluting, um, you know, my bags, you're, you're, you know, you're diluting the market share of Litecoin and Doge. Um, and I think both are true. I think, I think the increasing the price of Litecoin also increases the security budget, right? So mm -hmm. it, it's, well, it, it's really, it's an interesting phenomenon. And a lot of people, like I myself am conflicted, but ultimately I, I've come to the conclusion that what's good for the goose is good for the gander. You know, if uh, the miners, the, in fact, like, yeah, the miners are making more profit. That'll encourage more people to mine script uh, and maybe take up some data center um, space away from, take some data center space away from the Shuff 256 miners. Hmm. Um, but I want to go back though to about the tribalism. Like I know what you're saying. Like it's uh, what you would say is like reasonable greed. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's detrimental. It, it's the people that choose to be... Um, unreasonably loyal to a chain by like denying like to take tron information and not say you know what there's obviously a lot of users there like i need that's information i need to take in if you just block it out and say bitcoin only you're going to go out of business and you're going to just continue to see I it over agree. and over again and it's like and uh it's so crazy to me when like when i think jameson lop added ethereum to casa and they're just like yeah People are, it's like, dude, it's a business. He's in business. Yeah. What do you think this is? This is it the real gets world. This all the time. You know, when we add the next altcoin 
we have people say, what, you know, like, why are you pandering to all these altcoins and, and that type of thing? So, yeah. So, you, yeah, I, there's a limit. You can't say I'm going to have 20,000 because you're going to work yourself to the bone for no gain, but you have to look at the landscape. And this has been, I'll keep saying it again, the best thing to happen to Litecoin is that any business that starts today is going to go to the major players and say, all right, who's the, who's the popular apps? BitRefill, BitPay, I think Coins, PH, what, what are the other ones? I don't know, but there's a bunch of them. And they'll go, what are people actually using? Okay, Bitcoin, mm -hmm. Ethereum, Litecoin's up there. and everything. So, okay, I'm going to add Litecoin. And so it kind of becomes a self-fulfilling thing, right? Absolutely. ATM Coinbase Commerce. Coinbase Commerce has only yeah. been around for a year or two, and they were smart enough to add Litecoin because they saw that, like, whoa, this thing is used. And and like you said, just keeps the snowball rolling. Mm -hmm. and that's And that's more people that use powerful. it. Yeah, and I think the more people that, as they look for other options, if I'm on yeah, if I'm on bit refill and I'm looking to buy a coin, I'm like, oh shit, okay, Bitcoin's five bucks. Oh, crap. <laughs> Ethereum's three dollars, Tron's two dollars. Like you might just go down the list and go, oh, this one's a penny. Okay, I'm just gonna use that one. That yeah. that's it's habit forming and it's sticky. And I think that's been the most encouraging thing with all the downtrend on uh these pairs and how Litecoin's just kind of stagnated. It's super encouraging to say at some point that will reverse. And that this isn't going away. I mean, that you're not, even if the price of Litecoin goes down to $10 or something, people are still using it and they're going to continue to use it because it's the best, most widely available option for them. And that's, I mean, and if people, what, what else can you ask for? using it, like the chain will, the, the blocks will still keep coming, right? Like, because it's, yeah, like people would have to stop using Doge and Bells, right? For that to happen. But as long as the miners don't, yeah, I don't think, I don't think we're going to, but my point is, there, we're not at the point. We're maybe, maybe we're at the point of no return. Can a new coin come out that just usurps everything and everybody uses it all the time? Maybe. But uh, the more habits that are formed and the growth and the usage, that's gets harder and harder to remove that from any exchange. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. We're gonna now. We got to transition here, Matt. You've been very gracious. I feel like this has gone longer than I expected this thread to go. But I do yeah. want to talk about your PPQ, pay per Q, which is like pay per view. Animal told me. All right, let me. Uh, I've got to bring it up though. I deposited a, a couple name. dollars. Essentially, yeah, I like the name pay per Q. Um, let me. I got to figure out how to share here. Hold on a second. Even though I was just doing it, I promise. I got this figured out. So you want to give me a quick synopsis? Litecoin just got added, right? Yep. Yeah. Looking so at this information that you. Uh... <clears throat> it's it's sorry, a, sorry. It's a, your basic AI chatbot that we've all tried out. ChatGPT. Uh, maybe maybe users have tried out something else in varying degrees, other models, etc. Maybe they've made an image or something, but. This is uh, that same experience, except it runs on crypto payments. So in most websites nowadays, when you want to try something cool with AI, it's the same flow. It's freemium usage where they give you like some sort of crappy diminished user experience. Uh, and then they try to roll you into a subscription. This is different. So you come, you pay a dollar, five dollars, 10 cents in Litecoin. You get access to the best models in the world, GPT-40, Claude Sonnet. Um, you get the best image generation, Dolly, Flux Pro, Stable Diffusion. Um, and you, you get the premium experience, but you don't have to connect your credit card. You don't have to sign up for a subscription or anything like that. Um, it's all pay per use and uh, it works just like all of the others. Uh, and that's the, it's a very basic premise, but I think very powerful. It's more of, um, the, the innovation going on here is the fact that uh, crypto is being used as the payment rail. And, and uh, with that comes instant settlement. As a merchant, I don't have to deal with chargeback fraud risk or anything like that. I don't have to mm -hmm. deal with credit card fees. You don't, as a customer, don't have to deal with your identity being leaked on the internet or anything like that. Uh, so I think it's a really big win. And um, yeah, you can, it has... Uh, a whole bunch of features you can ask it you know uh what is mweb on litecoin you can ask that right Ooh. now on gpt40 let's see 
Um, what do you just what is MWeb? Right, let's just yeah, let's explain, see explain MWeb. MWeb on Litecoin. Yeah, yeah uh, explain MWeb on Litecoin and Enter. pretend I'm 16 years old. Yep. <laughs> let's see. Uh oh. So the interesting part is what did that cost me? Because I had two dollars at the beginning. That cost me a penny. This is a ripoff. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So this is like a top up, right? This is very similar to your top up feature, right? I just put in a certain amount and then I've got access to it. And for most people, this is going to last like a couple bucks will last them almost a month on our platform. And that's compared to a $20 subscription that people are normally paying. Um, hmm. And the value you get from AI, I, I wouldn't have built this website without AI. AI has increased my productivity so much. Um, so I think it's like you're paying a ridiculously small amount of money for the value you're getting. Yeah, I'm curious. There's one that uh, somebody was talking about cursor AI help you to develop. Um, mm -hmm. Are you try Is it easy for you to add more? Like you, so you have subscriptions to all of these. So we have. We don't have subscriptions. We have. We've connected our credit card, so to speak, to these providers. So we're paying them fiat, and then we're collecting crypto, selling the crypto, and paying our bills. Um, well, that's what I'm uh, saying. So you have a premium subscription to dolly that we we're borrowing it right we're renting space on your subscription it's not a subscription gone, though we're out. connected we're connected to open ai's api so this is, subscription model is not the only way that open ai sells its ai oh they also have, okay i didn't know that yeah and, and a lot of people are not aware of that type of thing but yeah so we pay open ai on a per image basis and then we just tack on a margin to it and that's it's very basic um, All right. Litecoin's great, but it has two main problems. Anyone can see your transactions and how much Litecoin you have. The network can get slow and expensive when a lot of people use it. MWeb helps solve these problems. Yeah. All right. It's pretty. It's main a pretty layer. good, uh, pretty good explainer. I think I, I looked at it quickly, but yeah. Yeah. It says for... it's, it's a layer two. Basically, that's two layers. And then um, try try an image generation so you can switch the model at the top. You can uh, first of all you can start a new chat. Uh, yeah, so I'm curious um, about something, and I, I I don't know if it's possible, but I've seen that demo of the GPT 4.0 where people just talk talk to the thing in a natural right. way. And it is that possible with the with this uh, with this service? Paper Q or uh, not yet, but it it is something we could add. So it, you would have to do the, uh, you would have to relay the, the audio, I guess. Or how would that work? Yes, we would be collecting your uh -huh. audio. So you, you use the remove background, which no, no, yeah. no, no. You, you use the only image generation model that doesn't generate <laughs> images. Uh, so remove background <laughs> is you give it an image and it removes the background. Oh, yeah, but nice. so okay. Choose, okay. choose Dolly 3, for example, and say, give it that same prompt. Create a Litecoin logo or something like that. Because I'm actually working on this. We have, we're actually interviewing a, a marketing guy from Litecoin this evening, and I'm, I need him to help me out. They use, they're not usually good with words, though. That's the thing. But maybe that's just because I'm on the cheap version. Yeah, they generally are not good with words. We're, we're going to add uh, ideograms, which are good with words. Whoa, but that's this, actually this, this ain't of, bad. Oh. Yeah, it's only missing one letter. Or no, is it maybe? Is that T? Yeah. This is the I, I and T. Yeah. So you're Could right. Be they, worse. Do, they do struggle with letters, but ideograms it's another ai company that just released the beta for their api uh we're we're implementing that soon and it's it's really good with with uh letters and stuff so, so like in a lot of ai i can continue this conversation right i can say you know what i'd like you to you know make it more add add red to it 
yeah, or something, right? Can I do that, or am I kind of like in a silo each time I? To some degree, to some degree, there's different types of modifications. But yeah, if you click on the edit, this brings up the in painter. So that's your paintbrush size. So uh, click on the little eye, and it'll tell you what to do. Yep. Activate the editor, then click and drag within the image to use in painting highlighter. Okay. So let's say I wanted to, I don't know, make this. What the? Well, that doesn't help me. <laughs> so then click on the little Undo. eraser. Undo that. Yeah. yeah. There you go. So Only I right. can just freehand something, but okay. Yeah. How do I know what color that's going to be? Well, so you're just, what you're doing is, okay. So for example, high, yeah. Do that. And then you're going to give it a text prompt that says, um, what do you want to go in the red space? Think of something you want to go into the red space. A Shiba oh. Inu dog. Oh. Okay. So um. make that area and then type in Shiba Inu. Make the brush bigger. Now, it, is that okay? Yeah, that, that's fine. It might work. Shiba, <laughs> add, let's add Shiba, add Dogecoin. Low, add okay. Shiba and the Inu. other thing is, and we're not, we haven't done a good job of explaining this, but don't say add. Just put oh, what okay. goes in the red blob. There you go. And hopefully it'll work. This is interesting. This one is a bit finicky, but oh, we'll see. It takes it's a still, bit of time. It worked on my end. Oh, you mean like I've got uh, a lag? My computer's not fast enough? No, no, no. It's on their end. It depends on, yeah, it's 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 our provider is doing the work. <laughs> and it takes time. Yeah. That's so cool. Oh, my gosh. And then go to your so, account on, activity. So, oh, okay. so go to your account activity and it'll show you mm -hmm. that cost uh, 1.8 cents to do that. That's so unstable. A different AI did it. Yes. So Dolly did not do it. Our in painter is a different model. Yeah. So what if I go, hang on a minute. birthday hat or something like that hang on yep i had to add a top hat like a bell <laughs> cowboy hat <laughs> i don't know why i just felt like doing that let's see what's interesting is the animated so that stable diffusion is more of a real realism and you know again if i don't take this as a critique but uh if there are like better ways of uh yeah, like if I knew Stable Diffusion was more real pictures and Dolly was more like animated yeah. pictures, that would be useful. No, I didn't get a hat. Disappointed. Oh, darn. Oh, it's well. very finicky. It I think if you made the blob bigger, you might have a better chance. Gotcha. But yeah, that's that's basically how it works. Um, I've played around with it a lot. Yeah. And then put in that's cool, cowboy hat. It's good. <laughs> this is adult. We're adults. We are all yeah. adults here. <laughs> well, that's cool. Now, can you do you have a lot of knowledge about these different platforms and which ones are used for different like when you say best new model, is it yeah. best in what way? What do you mean by that? Yeah, I do have more knowledge than the average person, but it's very hard to keep up. Even the experts, it's very hard to keep up with all these insane new models. But in general, Sonnet is, oh, all right. He's wearing a hat. There you That's go. Awesome. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's, I do know more than what's being said, but the problem is, is you have to, communicating that to users is very difficult because they're not gonna read 10 paragraphs about each model. Um, so you have to find yeah. ways to really simplify, like, what is the big standout thing? In terms of, like, which one is more realistic, which one is not, you can actually tell Stable Diffusion to be, like, make an animation or make a 3D thing or, you know, and it will follow those guidelines. So you can make it seem more, like, mystical or that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, it's all a matter of, you know, you're just playing around with it. So um, the other thing question. is... So I want to ask you, 
you, uh, I want to ask you as a fresh user to see if you understand how this website works. If you came back to this website later, would your money still be there? And would your conversation still be there? What do you think? Well, I would assume so. Um, uh, but now that I think about it, I don't know how you know me as a user. I didn't log exactly. in. Exactly. So the answer is it will be back. It will be there when you return because your credit ID and all of your previous conversations are stored in the local storage of the browser history. And that's where I'm getting a little more technical than most people understand. But this is a problem that I've had with PPQs up till now is there's no login, there's no account creation flow that everyone is used to. So I think mm -hmm. a good chunk of my users, they come here and they feel like once they leave the website, their $2 are gone. And that's not true. Um, and so mm -hmm. I'm I'm, I'm th this is a bit of a new paradigm in terms of a website where it's a website that stores information that you have have on it, but it doesn't have like a traditional account. So I need to like find ways to make it more obvious to users that like they can you'll notice on the left, you have your one conversation, but you can make a new chat. And so you can have, you know, 10 different chats and go through 10 different chat histories and stuff. But, and all this disappears if you clear your cash. Exactly. That's another That's hazard that I have to deal with. And I have users come mm -hmm. to me rarely, but they'll say like, hey, my browser deleted. How do I get my money back? And um, this is a challenge because, and this actually is one advantage of Lightning, is that in Lightning payments, I can sneak uh, their credit ID into the invoice memo of the payment, but you cannot do that with other payment methods because it's all public on the blockchain. So for example, if I put in, in into the Litecoin transaction, your credit ID, somebody could just look on the blockchain and pretend to be you and steal your credit ID. Um, so I have to find ways to make the money recoverable uh with these other payment methods so it, it it's a bit tricky but it's kind of zk technology maybe i don't know uh I, the easiest way is i just show them their credit id after they made that two dollar payment and i say store this somewhere safe because if you lose it it's gone that's the easiest way to do it uh, but i don't have to do that with lightning because they have an encrypted memo so they can just go into their wallet of satoshi and look at their memo even six months from now and recover their account credit. Yeah, I see you can you can export your data as well as a JSON, yep. uh, which is pretty cool. And then import yeah, is go. coming soon. Yeah, you have files, you have, uh, you can, you know, we have a referral program. Uh, you can give it a prompt. Yeah, you can upload local files, like you can upload a PDF and see, tell I've got it. An an old logo let me see if i can find a it doesn't it not, doesn't export pictures now, not, right I, you can download pictures you can but do, yeah right yeah the export thing i it's not going to export the images you have to download them individually yeah okay hmm interesting be a lot of data at some point potentially to do i'm gonna be playing with it for sure I'm not gonna mess around with it. I don't got time. We'll do it another time. It's been it's been I've been here long enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I've taken I, enough of your time. Man. No, but it's uh, very it's cool. Like I think like that... one user left listening to this. Uh, I'm sure when 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 it when the podcast is released because we've been going for a long time. So you know you should join our spaces. They sometimes go long, but it's been good. I got to keep it under two hours. That's what I've learned. Or YouTube won't yeah. take it. Uh, yeah. The audio at least. But. Uh, no, man, I, I mean, I really appreciate you coming in. If you don't, I, it'd be cool every time you do this, you do the, how often do you, three, every three or six months you do the statistics? No, it was like, an, it was like almost a year and a half actually between the two. Was it really? Yeah. I didn't it takes a long that. time okay. to put it together and there's a lot of like people who have to sign off on it and stuff like that. So. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. Now and overall it's, it's very interesting and yeah, maybe if it's a year and a half, it'd be a good reason to check in, but uh, definitely check out ppq.ai pay per q um yeah and you can use your litecoin it's super super cheap it's great and uh yeah and that bit refilled i mean 
I didn't even go to the BitRefill site. I use it. It's a great way to take your crypto and make it usable. Uh, do you guys have anything like integrations with cards or I know like, I mean, obviously Visa just came out with something where you can spend it, but just everything's preloaded, right? Everything at BitRefill? Not, no, we do have a, uh, a Visa card in Europe now or a Visa MasterCard. Um, okay. And so it's an, you have to go through KYC, but basically you can load mm -hmm. crypto into it and spend, spend o over time. We also do have prepaid uh, cards uh, where you yep. can get like a prepaid, a hundred dollar prepaid MasterCard or something like that. Um, so you can go different routes, but uh, yeah. Yeah. I'd like to, you know, the thing I want to do is, find what's the best path of saving the most money using crypto. Cause I think sometimes it feels like there's a lot of tools, like it's pay your bills and you get a certain percent off. Like we had a guy from stack mobile. It's a cell phone service. You can save 15% using crypto essentially same thing with a lot of these gift cards, right? You save two, three, 4% sometimes um, mm -hmm. you wonder how much can you pile those things up and can you get to, Hey, I'm saving 15, 20%. I don't know. That's pretty extreme, but you know, maybe it's seven or eight even that can yeah. be a big deal for us. I think the big draw is the convenience factor and, and um, yeah, it's just very quick and easy to get a quick gift card and load it into whatever app you bought it for. That's how I use bit refill is um, I'll just buy a quick Uber or Airbnb or Amazon card or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and I top okay. up my account and then when it runs low, I'll top it up again. All right. Well, Hey, I do. Thank you for your time. It was more than I expected. Uh, <laughs> I, I didn't expect to go that long. We got a little side you guys. I, I, right, I yeah. love the uh, discussion around, you know, around the histories of all these coins and, and how things are developing now. So it's, it's cool. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we do a Twitter spaces every Wednesday uh, at 9 PM. You're always welcome to come in. I'll throw you an invite here in the next couple of weeks. If, um, I'm sure people will have a lot of questions about, uh, Litecoin and you know we're not Litecoin nuts right we we understand it has its place and we're not like someone who you can't talk about other coins it's reality so um, mm -hmm. we're pretty open and not very combative so uh, yeah maybe we'll come in so all right thanks and uh, I'll end it here but thanks everybody for joining us and hopefully you lasted the whole two hours if you did thank you uh, and have a good one <laughs>